Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I hope everybody had a great weekend. You know, one of the biblical principles that I love the best is when Jesus talks about not to care about or worry about what you eat or drink. He doesn't want us consumed with that. He doesn't want us worried about these things. Why? Because he takes care of the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Why wouldn't he take care of his children? And those verses always just always stayed close to my heart when it comes to dealing with all the challenges that we're having to go through in the way that the controllers are running the world. They want us in fear, don't they? They want us to always be in fear of these things. That way they can control us better. And I don't know about you guys, but all I heard leading up to this uh, holiday were threats of, we're not going to have turkeys this year, or the turkeys are going to be in short supply. You, m you should get your turkeys now. And if we haven't learned a lesson by now, we should understand that they do this on purpose to whip up that fear. And when we give in to that spirit of fear, when we talk about those things as if they're true, then we're giving right into the enemy and we're breaking Jesus' wishes about how we're to conduct ourselves. We're giving in to the trick. I don't know about you guys, but I was out and about and I saw turkeys all day long for 99 cents a pound. The same price they've always been for the last 30 years that I can remember. So I just encourage you guys as we go into this this season of the fake holidays, right? I know some of you still observe them. Um, I'm not here to judge you. But don't give in to the fear. That's the least we can do is not give in to the fear that the enemy has set out. I know last year it kind of happened as people were in fear of not being able to get together because of VidCo19. Remember that? And a lot of people gave in to that fear because they couldn't imagine a, a holiday without family because that's how they've programmed us to believe. Okay, so let's get into some other topics today. I want to talk about the Rittenhouse case, and I'm not going to talk about it the way you've probably heard it being talked about. You know, the media is working really hard to try to stir the pot in this case, aren't they? But the question I want to ask you guys today is, do you really believe that the controllers have achieved their objective to solidify the divide in America? That's the question today. And I really don't think so. And I'll tell you why in a minute. Now, you've all probably heard the commentary and the debates surrounding the case. Right? Everybody's been talking about it. All the channels have done, done their videos on it, things like that. And most of it was based on, was he guilty or not guilty? Was it self-defense or was it not self-defense? Do people have the right to carry a lethal pop stick or don't they? That's already been debated and discussed. But I want to discuss things from a different perspective today. I want to talk about the psychological operation behind the case. And we're going to talk a little bit about that. And then later in the show, we're going to get into some of these other headlines that I have pulled up for you guys. Now, here's the story behind the story with this case. No black people died in this incident. But. We've gone so far down this road of racial divide that there doesn't even have to be a black victim anymore, does there, for the race car to be pulled. In this case, a person or people were hurt who supported the black cause, or they're assuming that those people supported the black cause because they were there doing what the other groups were doing, right? And now they're trying to call that racism. Now, I was watching the verdict when it came down. I almost was going to go live, but I figured you guys are going to be overwhelmed with all this stuff. And I like to always take a step back, wait a few days before, you know, before I give my opinion on things. I don't ever want to come out, you know, prematurely and say things that aren't in line with the Holy Spirit 
and what God wants for us, because he does want us all to be together, doesn't he? Under him. Now, of course, those who aren't with him, we will be divided away from them. But that's a different topic. We're talking now about people who love God who are being divided because of this thing. And that he does not like that. He does not like division in within his followers, does he? So they had interviewed this guy right after the trial. Right, right after the ver the verdict. He was one of the first people interviewed. And, of course, he was a left-wing extremist. And he was the first voice people heard, really, of the reaction. And he tried to make the case that Rittenhouse was a racist. And it just didn't make any sense. But that person was given a voice. Now... Even if he was, all right, let's just assume he was, okay, let's let's just say he was, even though he wasn't, would that even be relevant to this case? No, it wouldn't, because anybody who was watching saw that this guy could have been, you know, Saddam Hussein. With the evidence that was shown, it was still self-defense. Uh, that was probably a bad example, Saddam Hussein, because he did a lot of good stuff for his people. He was made out to be a scapegoat by the by the U.S. But think of like the worst possible person you can imagine in the same situation with the same video evidence. And it doesn't matter who that person was. The video evidence showed that he defended his life. And his belief system didn't really play a part in this particular case. Now, everybody who was watching saw that he was attacked and he defended himself. And I would say by looking at the aggression that was coming towards him, probably there was probably about a 50% chance that if he did not defend his life, then he would have lost it. I would say it was 50-50. They may have beat him up really bad or they may have killed him and they might have felt justified in that because of in their mind what they thought they were justified to do because he was because the media has hyped up this image of a, of these lethal pop sticks and they've taken on a life of their own right and i can imagine that in the courtroom had he not popped his pop stick then i can imagine that a prosecution would try to turn that around if he in fact did lose his life and the people that actually took his life in that exchange probably would have gotten away with it. So he had to do what he had to do. And even if he didn't lose his life by not popping the pop stick, I would say there was probably an 80% chance that he would have had some serious injuries coming away from that had he not pulled the trigger of the pop stick. So the question then becomes, why would the media interview a guy who tried to make this racist case against Rittenhouse when it really didn't matter, as we just discussed? Well, they said if it was a black man who had carried out the same actions in self-defense, that he would have been convicted. That was the guy's argument. First of all, I think that if a black man had a jury of his peers with the same evidence, a jury would have made the same decision. Now, would he have been able to get a jury of all black people? Like Rittenhouse got a jury of, I don't even know what the racial makeup of the jury was. Um, that might not have been allowed. I don't know. But even if that were true, even if it was true that a, a, that a, a black man would not have gotten the same result, the same verdict. Does convicting Rittenhouse, does that solve the problem? Does putting an innocent man in jail solve the problem? In other words, does condemning an innocent person help any of us feel better that maybe a black person in the same position may have been convicted? No, it wouldn't. It does not solve the problem. In fact, it makes the problem worse. But we're to the point now 
where these elaborate arguments and stretches of the imagination have become the norm when it comes to these narratives of racism. Now, this might be hard for some people to hear, but the problem does not lie with the person in this case. The problem lies with the system. And the media who's pushing the system where people feel like they have to stand up for their side. In some cases. Now, who is allowing this to happen? Well, the controllers, of course. Because it plays into the narrative of division. That they have to keep alive to keep us all separated. Think of this racing as a distraction. Okay, while everybody's talking about the racial aspects, then the controllers on the other side are getting away with all of the other agendas that they want to push through because they've got everybody distracted and divided over the race issue. That's all a lot of people talk about. And that was the intended, you know, uh, objective, let's say. So what they do, part of that agenda, is to allow the incoherent voices to have a voice, to give them airtime. Why? Because it enrages the other side. Now, there's incoherent voices on both sides, the right and the left. And each time they let one of these people speak and they give them airtime, all it does is continue the divide and keeps everything going. Now, I can see this as clear as I can the hand in front of my face, but this is really hard for some people to wrap their brain around, to understand how they're being used, to understand all these emotions that are getting whipped up into mean absolutely nothing. It's all part of the agenda. Now, here are the protests, hundreds, which is not, to me, not a protest. Many of these were, people were probably bust in to create the illusion that people were angry about the verdict. But look at this. Here they parade out Thump. Remember the media swore to never give him any airtime ever again. There's no reason to have to give him airtime anymore, isn't there? Right? Remember Thump was supposed to just, you know, crash in a flame of glory. And, you know, he was going to lose all his riches because of his belief system. Well, here's the thing. They need Thump. Why? Because... He is the, they have basically couched him into the far right, haven't they? And they need that division. That's why they keep weaponizing him. So here he congratulates Rittenhouse, right? The media loves to do this. He's, they have turned Thump into the resident racist and they deploy him every time that they want to taunt the left. Okay, and also anytime they want to make the right go ha, ra, 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 right? And make him and, and cheerlead for the right. This is what they do. This is why they run these stories. Now, on its face, there's nothing wrong with Thump's comments here, but understand the message behind the message and how this has been weaponized. The quote unquote right wing endorsement, which, you know, I'm hoping that. Rittenhouse is beyond this right-left paradigm. But this is what they're, these people are up to. And even if he isn't really far right-wing, it's the role that Thump's been cast in. He's been cast into that role. And he doesn't really deny it either, doesn't he? He doesn't even try to deny it because it's the role he's been cast in. Because they need all the players on the chessboard. They need all the players on the chessboard. Now, it's interesting. I've been watching this uh, show called Narcos. And you can see the whole political manipulation as they were trying to track down Pablo Escobar. Now, this was in the 90s. And, of course, we know that all these presidents were into the white powder. They were all doing it, okay, from the Bushes to the Clintons. This was their thing. But yet... They, were, they basically made Pablo Escobar the fall guy, the scapegoat. And why did they do this? They did it because they couldn't control it. And believe it or not, if one day Pablo Escobar actually got into some kind of political power, he actually was, um, he actually did become a congressman. And that's very little known about him. A lot of people don't know. 
that Escobar had become a congressman, but he actually did. This was early on. He was still a, a trafficker. And he did a lot of very evil things. But the real reason why they went after him is because he was creating his own economy. $30 billion. And adjusted to today's standards was almost $100 million. And this was money that was not being taxed. It was all being laundered. And basically he was exporting all of this white powder to the United States, tons, I think it was 350 tons a year is what was coming to the U.S. We were consuming it, and America wasn't making any money on it, were they? We're talking about an entire economy, you guys, $64 billion. And had, let's say that somehow... Uh, you know, Escobar had reached the presidency. Well, that would have created a narco state, which is not what America wanted in Colombia. Okay, because that's a very powerful economy that that becomes. And so they tell the story about the, the CIA and their involvement in Colombia. But interestingly, there were some bombings that had occurred throughout the time that they were chasing Pablo Escobar. They blame all of them on Escobar, but I'm starting to wonder if that kind of chaos wasn't created by our own government to basically turn the people against Escobar. You see, the reason why they couldn't catch Escobar was because he was a hero in Medellin. He spent some of his narco money building churches and actual houses for people for free. In fact, he would give away lots of money. We're not talking little bits of money. We're talking lots of money. In fact, he gave away a good portion of his wealth to the poor. Why? Because he grew up poor and he was starting to begin to make the case against the oligarchy. He was just starting to do that. And people were like, you know what? You're right. Here we live in Colombia, a resource-rich nation. We've got these people in government. They don't give a crap about us. We all live in squalor with no you know, adequate plumbing and heating, with open sewers. Big, you know, and all this happened, and the people begin to wake up. Now, unfortunately, we're talking about a lethal. Uh, substance, the white powder. I'm not going to say what it is because I don't know what YouTube feels about that, but I'm not defending that he did that and made that and that people's lives weren't ruined by that. I'm making the point that when the United States doesn't like something, they'll say it's for certain reasons. They'll say it's because it's ruining our children. They'll say it's because of this and say it's because of that. But the real reason why they didn't like him is because he was about to overturn the oligarchy he went for almost an entire decade without being caught. Why? Because no one would tell on him. Because he gave all of his money back to the people. Now, the optimal situation that you'd want to see with a person like Escobar was to replace the white powder with something else. Like uh, bananas or something. Or whatever else it is. The, the resource the resources of the country and have him have the same attitude toward it but something that is more beneficial and doesn't destroy people's lives if you could take that same um, what's the word I'm looking for example and translate that into the personality of Escobar without the violence of course that would be a government that was would be more closely related to the way God would run things, right? God gives us abundance on this planet, even in this fallen state. And we're going to talk about some of that tomorrow on tomorrow's show. I've got a whole show for you guys on reimagining Genesis and exactly what the garden was and the abundance that God had given us originally and how we were all severed or cut off from that. And even in this fallen state, 
we have everything we need if greedy men would just get out of the way. Now, we've talked about this from time to time. You know, there are countries where there's just wild fruit trees growing and wild gardens. There's plenty of food for everybody. It's greedy men who try to put that into an economy and make people pay for it. That's the problem. If everything would just be allowed to grow wild, you'd have mango trees everywhere. No one would ever be hungry. No one would ever have to get a job in the system and slave away for greedy men. They could tend their own farm and pick fruit from trees and be perfectly okay. Now, Columbia is a prime example. A lot of Columbia is rainforest. There's wild plantains and bananas growing everywhere. Mangoes. You know, you could literally be a farmer, build your own house, and live outside of the grid. It isn't until people get stuffed into a city and an economy that you have poverty, squalor, and just overall sadness. The state of man in sadness enslaving away for someone else taking away all that precious time from your children and the people who really deserve it so the story of pablo escobar what a story right and now i'm not going to say that he didn't he killed a lot of people that guy was a killing machine but i think in the end some of these bombings that they blamed on him may have been our own government to turn the people against him because there were innocent children and women that were killed in these bombings. And that was unspoken in the show. In the show, they actually blame him for everything. But if you think about it, he loved women and children. So you just can't imagine that he would he would realize as the chess player he was that by doing that, he would have turned the people against him. Okay, so that's the big elephant in the room, isn't it? So just some words on that whole series um, and and how America, how we involve ourselves in other people's politics for all the wrong reasons. It's not for the reasons that they tell us. Okay, so here's some good news now. About this back to this Rittenhouse case. What we saw on the media. I don't believe. Translated very well into real life. What I was expecting to see. Over the weekend. Were divided people. Sitting in different sections. According to race. In a restaurant. In protest of the case. Or people simply avoiding each other. Or not interacting with one another. I even expected to possibly see some mild aggression or shouting matches or maybe some people in the streets with signs. But let me tell you what I really saw and what gave me hope. That I saw people of different races, for the most part, ignoring the case. People were just starting to come out of their homes, weren't they? After this whole Vidco thing. And starting to assemble together, weren't they? But I didn't see that. I didn't. I mean, I didn't see people ignoring each other. I didn't see any people divided. And for the most part, people were ignoring the case. And I saw people of all races laughing together, getting along, even while the case was playing out on a television. People of different colors. Now, the best part was that nobody was wearing masks. It's like everybody has been woken up from these operations of division. They're starting to wake up. Now, of course, the media is showing the few hundred protesters that were out, a smattering here and there. And they were probably all bust in. I didn't see any real national outrage, just the illusion of outrage so far. And the only people that I've really seen in terms of uh, extreme reactions are the out-of-touch celebrities and the media. Every one of these people you should boycott, if I were you. 
Shame on LeBron James, for instance, and all the other actors and media people who are trying to make this a race issue and actually advocating and pushing for violence and a reaction and a protest. It's pretty ridiculous. Shame on you. You see, most of America is breaking free of the deception. So their little operation didn't seem to go as they had planned it, did it? And amen to that. There is hope. There is hope. Now let's get into these other headlines. We're gonna those are my thoughts on the Rittenhouse case. Yeah, I, I fully understand that many of you believe that the whole thing was not real. And I guess that's there's a pot that's possible, I suppose. We're just speaking of the ideas behind it, whether it was real or not. And what their intention was to try to keep America divided. So, let's keep going with this. And continue reading this next article. Now, if you have a rebellious teenager who wants to get a rise out of their parents, oh, just go on down to Walmart and get a Pokemon sticker against their will. This is unbelievable. Kansas mom sues Walmart for allegedly giving the Pokemon sticker to her daughter without consent. Now, this used to be unheard of, but now this is happening in America. Now, why, you might ask, is this happening? Well, I can tell you why. It's because the incentive and accolades that people who are champions for the Pokemon sticker are receiving is so pervasive that you end up in situations like this. There are literal people who are like, uh, what's the word? Social justice warriors going out and trying to get as many people as they can to get the Pokemon sticker. Literally, this is their like aim in life now. Many of them are doing it just to spite the right. Right? Let's read this article know what this page is doing but it's acting weird an Olaf mother sued wall smart for allegedly giving the vidco 19 pokemon sticker to her 15 year old daughter without the parents consent according to court documents michelle Tomlinson filed a suit thursday in johnson county court wall smart and 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 an unknown pharmacist we take allegations like this seriously. What's up with this page? Here, let's re let's reload it. Why it's acting weird? No lot. Okay, so let's keep going. We take allegations like this seriously. Senior manager said at Wall Smart. We will review the claims and respond with the court as appropriate once we are served. On September 10th, her daughter with a 21 year old brother in law went into Wall Smart. And all to obtain the Vidco Pokemon sticker. The two went into the pharmacy counter and said that the teen wanted to get a Pokemon sticker by herself without parental consent. Well, right at that point, a parent should have been called, shouldn't they have? Because teenagers do stuff like this all the time to get a rise out of their parents, don't they? Especially if they disagree with what their parents think about all this, right? So what are they going to do? I'm going to go get it. They've been so thoroughly programmed that their parents are crazy. I could see this happening across the board. So initially, a pharmacist said she could receive the Pokemon sticker, but paperwork required a parent or a legal guardian's name and signature, according to the suit. Upon seeing that this was left blank, a Wall Smart employee asked her brother-in-law if he was 18 years old. He replied yes, but that he was unable to sign as a parent or legal guardian. During the conversation, it was believed that Tomkinson's daughter was got the Pokemon sticker by a pharmacist and a Pokemon card had been given to her. She contends that she was available if Walmart had tried to contact her. This is unbelievable. So, this is what's going on. Don't let your children go to places where they can get the Pokemon sticker. Unbelievable. So, this is a result of programming. Meanwhile, 
Ouchie doesn't understand why parents have not stickered their children yet. Because, of course, he knows what's better for your children than you do, right? Wrong. Business Insider. He just doesn't understand what, who, <laughs> parents who have not Pokemon stickered their kids. What are you waiting for? Protect your children. Okay. No thanks. Now, the Marine Corps, according to this Washington Post article, they're the ones getting the roast right now. An F for compliance. The worst record of the Pokemon sticker. Shame on you, Marines. Who cares if you risk your lives in decades of a pointless war? You're going to get the sticker. Let's read this. Up to 10,000 active duty Marines will not get the Pokemon sticker. When their deadline arrives this coming days, that's freaking awesome. Trajectory expected to yield the U.S. military's worst rate of mooning the nation. While 94% of the Marines have met the Pokemon sticker and are on the path to do so, for the remainder it's too late to begin the regimen and complete it by the service's November 28th deadline. Oh, that's the 333rd day of the year. The holdouts will join approximately 9,600 Air Force personnel who have outright refused the Pokemon sticker. Man, you guys should get a badge of honor. This is awesome. They should get the Nobel Peace Prize for this. I mean, look, a long time ago, a very wise person told me, it's the people that stand against the grain. It's the people that end up disappointing their family, friends, who are willing to give up their jobs for what they believe in. Those are the true heroes in our society. It's really easy to join a group and go along with, with people that are constantly patting you on the back and telling you how great you are. It's really easy to do that. But those aren't the real heroes. Real heroes are people that stand against the grain for what they believe in. Those are the real heroes in our society, in my opinion. And for these guys to have their, their, you know, entire careers on the line for what they believe in, that says something. That says a lot. Now, I don't believe in the military. I believe these people have all, are all being lied to. And then almost none of what that they do or told to do is justified. Okay. But they're on their own path and journey. And I hope that they wake up to these lies and wake up to how they were treated and walk out in mass. Or at least come back home and be someone who stands up for Americans on our own soil. Okay. That's where we need the help. That's where we need the help against our own government. It seems these days, doesn't it? Against our own government. So, that's what's going on with the Marines. That's some pretty good news. And this next article, are we finally going to be able to take our masks off? According to the New York Times. Well, I wouldn't hold your breath, but let's read this. When can the VidGo 19 masks finally come off? What does this say? Amid the turmoil of the past two years, a period that includes a deadly spamdemic mass layoffs, an ugly presidential election, and an attack on the crap hole. Some of the fiercest political debates in America have been waged over a nearly weightless piece of fabric, a face mask. Yeah, uh, a weightless piece of fabric. So why do you have your fabric in a bunch trying to force us all to put it on our face? That's the question. If it's just a weightless piece of fabric, right? Why are they so fixated on it? They have like a Fabric fixation, don't they? U.S. officials were slow to embrace face masks as a strategy for the slowing spread of the Vidco. When they finally did, they became a potent symbol of the spamdemic, common sense public health measure turned political flashpoint. A visible reminder that life was anything but normal. Yeah, it's not normal to force people in the entire of 300 million people to stick something over their face. It's just not normal. So, some public officials are mapping out the end game. Well, that's because they lost. Passing Florida lawmakers are passing a bill banning school mask mandates. New York's mayor, the new mayor, Eric Adams, wants to drop the mask mandate in schools. 
when health officials determine it's safe, there's a caveat. Cases are starting to rise again, of course, they're going to say that, and blah, blah, blah. So, I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't hold your breath. No pun intended. So, let's check in on Austria for our next story. First European country to make Pokemon stickers mandatory. This is the Telegraph. Vienna braces for violence as Austria becomes the first European nation country to make Vidco mandatory. Now, I can't even believe this is happening. Now, we looked up the word AUS, which also scrambles to USA. And in German, the word translates to the end. AUS translates to the end. And this is the end of the road for the people living in countries like Austria and Australia in terms of the policies that have been brought to bear against the people in those countries. So this is a new law announced Friday in Austria. It prompted fears that a 10,000 strong march in Vienna could descend into violence as anger builds against rules forcing people to get the Pokemon sticker. They're actually calling it a dictatorship, some people. And they're crossing a dark red line. So, this is what's going on in Austria. They had 1,300 officers standing by, while intelligence services warned that anti-Pokemon sticker activists plan to invade hospitals. Yeah, right. They're just saying that so they have a reason to crack down. They just make up whatever they want. So, unbelievable what's going on in Austria. So sad. So we'll follow, We'll try to follow that story in the coming days. I'm sure there will be protests. Now, what's this story? Well... The debate for natural eye mooning of the city is finally taking hold, it appears. GOP embraces, embraces natural mooning of the city as a substitute for the Pokemon sticker. Now, for those of you with a long memory, you'll remember that last year this time, if you even said this in a video, you would get taken down. They did not want anybody talking about this. It was called medical misinfo. But now, apparently, the debate is happening. Now, I don't know how this is going to shake out. But at least they're talking about it, right? That's hopeful. So, natural mooning of the city. They contend that people who have recovered have enough of the mooning of the city and ant bodies to not need the Pokemon sticker. And the concept has been invoked by the Republicans as sort of stand-in for the Pokemon sticker. Now, this is what I don't like about this. I don't like that one side is talking about this it's more division it's more right left paradigm okay both sides should be talking about this this should be unanimous but instead they're giving it to the republicans so they can further divide people right and left now what by by naming the republicans as the one talking about this all the people on the left now are going to say oh no no that's all misinfo. We're not talking about that. And it's going to cause all the people on the left to run out and get the Pokemon sticker just to oppose these people. That's the, that's how the right left works. I've seen it time and time again. I've seen presidents come and go and you'll see the exact same flashpoint issue. And just because one person's saying it and the other side's not, people feel one way. But as soon as the other person starts saying it, they've totally flipped the script on themselves and they don't even realize they're doing it. They don't even realize they're, they're doing it. Prime example was Blind 11. Remember that? Remember in the very beginning, the people on the left were like, they, you know, it was a, you know, it was all done by our government. Remember? But the people on the right were like, you guys are crazy. I know because I was one of those people. That issue was not a right left issue, but by dividing America and making it a right left issue, now we're starting to come full circle, aren't we? Now you got the people on the right who supported Bush now coming to terms with the fact that it was our own government. You see how that works? And that's why you have to step outside of all of that. 
And the only then will you see the truth. When, you're not, when your emotions and your belief systems are not guided by your emotions, instead they're guided by common sense, they're guided by evidence, and most of all, guided by the Most High. So, this is what's going on, you guys. This has now become a thing, and then they'll just debate this from here to Sunday, and nothing will ever get solved, because half the country will disagree with them, just because it's coming out of the Republicans. So, those are pretty much the headlines. I'm really looking forward to, to tomorrow's show, so we can get into the Word, get into Genesis, and we're going to break down individual Aramaic and Hebrew language. We're going to look at a concordance. We're going to cross-reference that to other places where that exact same word was used in different ways. Slight, um, basically differences in the way that the words translated can give a completely different meaning to the scriptures. Now, I want to preface that by saying nothing that we're going to talk about tomorrow contradicts the gospel, contradicts God's plan, or contradicts anything you've learned about the Bible. These are simply looking into possible other meanings and interpretations that might have been lost in the way the Bible is translated to either hide the truth or to throw you off the trail. So let's go into the chat for a minute. I think I'm coming out with a cold, you guys. I'm a little congested, so apologize. Yes, someone said Rittenhouse means swamp. I understand that if that's the case, again, that's to put him in a role, to try to put Rittenhouse in a role that then enrages the left, because the swamp was never drained. But again, that's not a right-left issue. The swamp is both sides. Both sides are the swamp. That's why the swamp was never drained. Someone's getting buffering. All right, let's keep... Uh, you know, it's crazy because once we get... It's almost like they're limiting our live shows. Once, uh, I guess their little tool was broken... Because they like to cap our live shows at 800 people. There's no way that we go live every day and we stay at 800 people. It's got to be growing. But what they'll do is they basically uh, throttle the live show. They only allow a certain amount of people to be on the live shows. And they do that to control the growth of channels. But a couple times their little tool is broken. I think one time we were up to 2,000 people and it was growing. And then they're like, oh, put the brakes on. Can't let this guy talk because he makes too much sense and it'll mess up our whole right left paradigm. So I understand that YouTube does do that. Okay. All right. What else is going on here? Slayer says because Marines already got way worse Pokemon stickers. Thanks, thanks for the, the tips, you guys. Oh, I'm just reading your comments. Some of you did not get a notification. Yeah, that, that just happens a lot. What I tell people is, we're here at the same exact time pretty much every day so you don't really need a notification if you just show up to the channel you know we'll be here every day except the weekends this last weekend i took both days off sometimes i'll upload on the weekends but the daily shows are the most important ones so okay the lord will give strength unto his people absolutely tom I am too, Joy. I'm ready to go home. All right. Okay, you guys. Well, thanks for showing up. We'll be back here tomorrow. We're going to get into the word. It's going to be a really cool show. We're going to talk about trees, the fallen trees, or the severed trees, because uh, I believe we were cut off from the garden. I believe what the word is really saying is we were cut off from the garden quite literally. Like cutting of the umbilical cord of the child when it comes out of the womb. Which is why 
after a child has their umbilical cord cut, what remains is called a stump because they were cut off and now they're in this dimension of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, born into sin. We're going to talk about all that tomorrow. We've talked about parts of this in the Body Code series, but we're going to get into some detail and drill down into some of these, uh, you know, the meanings of some of these words. Okay. We're going to talk about what it means to eat a tree and what it means to take of some of these words translate into going through like a portal and eating translates into that as well. So this is going to be fun. Now, for those of you that don't know, this is what a, con a concordance looks like. This one is an electronic concordance. So you hover over the word and it will tell you the Hebrew word that's used. And when you click on this, it will show you how that exact word was used in other parts of the Bible. I'll give you a little snapshot into what we're going to talk about tomorrow, just because I think it's important. We're going to spend most of our time in Genesis 3. So again, this is an electronic concordance. Other people know it as a mechanical Bible. There are many of these online. And so um, you don't have to use this one, but this is the one I, I, I've been using for several years. But uh, it says here, when you take of the tree, it actually means to transfer through or go through something. Let me see if I can find it on this page. I just want to give you guys a, a little snapshot into deeper meanings of this. All right. So here's the word take, right? Let's zoom this up here for you guys. 3947. Take of the tree. When you go into this word take, here are all the different meanings. To take and carry along. To carry off. To be captured. To be taken away. Kind of sounds like you're going through a portal, doesn't it? So we'll break all that down tomorrow. Anyway, I love each and every one of you. I hope you guys all have a great rest of your day. Take care and be safe, you guys.